a very warm welcome to Bharata First. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. This is Big Picture. Since you're here, I would like to thank you for your continued support. For those of you who haven't already subscribed, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and then all notifications. Do follow our social media handles for all the latest updates, and you can also subscribe to our newsletter to get some incisive content. The Bharata First team runs a daily big picture quiz. Please do participate by going through the description in big picture videos. Here are the UPI IDs for those of you who would like to come forward and make a contribution. A small contribution that you make will be a giant leap for us to keep bringing you this content. So do continue to show your love and support. All the information is in the description of this video along with a few more recommendations. So please go through it. And now on to the discussion. Rural unemployment has nearly doubled in a week as lockdowns and surging COVID infections in villages brought economic activity to a halt. A lull in farming is adding to joblessness. Rural unemployment shot up uh, to 14.34% in the week ended May 16th from 7.29% in the week ended May 9th. Data from the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy showed. Rural unemployment is at a 50-week high. The last time it was higher was nearly a year ago in the week that ended on June 7, 2020. Similarly, urban unemployment climbed to 14.71%, three percentage points more than a week ago, while the national unemployment rate soared to 14.45% from 8.67%, highlighting a job crisis amid the second COVID wave. Economists said that the high infection rate and lack of employment opportunities in urban clusters due to lockdowns forced people to leave for their villages. But in rural pockets, there aren't enough income opportunities. Besides, rural lockdowns and curfews have left people jobless both in formal and informal sectors, and a lull in farm activity in May is adding to joblessness. In this edition of Big Picture, we will analyze the state of the Indian economy and unemployment in particular. Joining me on the program today are Ajay Shankar, former Secretary, Government of India, Abhinav Prakash of Delhi University, and Shubhamai Bhattacharji, Consulting Editor of The Business Standard. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of Big Picture. Uh, Mr. Shankar, let me start the program with you first. Let's first try and understand and analyze the state of the Indian economy as it stands today. Well, the Indian economy had begun to recover and the expectation till two, three months back was that we'd have very high growth rate in this financial year. We'll almost get back to where we were before COVID. Now, all that has uh, gone for a six. We really don't know where we'll go. So that's one part. Uh, but as of now, uh, the expectation is that we will be in positive territory as far as growth is concerned in this financial year. Uh, till date, nobody is expecting negative growth this year, but uh, certainly the economic growth will be far more modest, uh, moderate in comparison to what everybody expected. The other factor is that uh, on unemployment and uh, growing inequality, uh, the situation keeps getting worse. So in the first wave and the lockdown, uh, so many people lost jobs. We had this vivid picture of people walking back home on the roads to their villages. Now, when the economy began to recover, many of them came back. But uh, overall, the feeling was that in terms of employment, it will still take a while to get back to where we were uh, before things became difficult. And now the situation is more complicated because now we don't know when restaurants, shops, malls, hotels will again think of getting back to normal. So that, that's one side of the problem. The other side of the problem is that the last decade has been a disappointing decade as far as employment generation or job creation has been. So the problem of the last year is over and above the structural problem on jobs and employment generation that the Indian economy was facing. So going forward, we have the short term challenge of figuring out what to do for those who lost jobs. And now people in the middle class are also losing jobs. I mean, it's not just the working class. 
and the other is how to reverse the uh, trend or the uh, change the structural nature of our growth trajectory that we create more jobs. Absolutely. Shubhavai, let me bring you into the picture now. You know, what are the key indicators telling us and, uh, you know, uh, where do we stand really as far as the economy is concerned? You know, Frank, if you want to look at unemployment numbers, they're really bad. I mean, that's they're not even try to pretend that there'll be anything. I mean, the CMIE data, which I'm sure uh, your audience would have seen, the Indian rate on 20th May, something like 10%, and the urban rural is 9-12. So those are big numbers. And that, but that's not unexpected because when you have uh, lockdowns effectively in large parts of the country, obviously people would be thrown out of jobs. So though that's, that's uh, not surprising. What I'm looking at is looking through to what happens next. That is where the situation would be interesting. As uh, most indicators are showing, I mean, if you look at any of the fund houses report, you'd find that they basically they are looking through the current lockdown to say that the <clears throat> economic revival or let's say companies would start showing better numbers uh, very soon. And that's true. Even if you, even in April, you saw the power demand has actually risen. So it's been a very, it's very, it's, 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 it's different in terms of what happens typically the the impact on people and the impact on the economy are two different things, as it's naturally expected. So individually, people have lost jobs, as the CMI data is showing. The economy per se is actually not hurt that bad. If the unemployment, if the lockdown stays further, if the pandemic sort of doesn't ease off, uh, which the current numbers are showing, it's easing off. If that stays on, then fine. Uh, it's just the first. Uh, it's just a middle of the first quarter the economy should come back much better, despite everything. What does it mean for, as uh, the headline of your show, this one is about unemployment. What does that mean for employment or re-employment of the people? Well, one of the things that you'd notice is, this time, rural areas are not the bulwark of support. The disease is spreading in rural areas. I suspect as anecdotal information will start getting spread in the rural areas, the problem of getting treatment in rural areas will get harder. People will actually migrate back to cities because whatever level they have, the, the, the level of support that they can get in a city will be much better than what they'll get in rural areas. So this is going to be an unusual phase. You will find people actually moving back to cities. There'll be much number of job seekers. Now, what does it show for the economy in terms of the employment rate? What will happen? What we're going to see is that the manufacturing sector is going to come back very strong. It's going, in fact, it has been stronger in the last quarter of uh, last financial year, and it's definitely going to be very strong. But manufacturing sector, that's actually good, should be good because that would mean if the linkages with the SME sector continues, it should provide more employment. India also has a large number of employment, as uh, was pointing out, in the services sector. And services sector is not going to revive so fast. So low uh, income level employment, which is the low skilled one, that I suspect will take time to recover. What you'll see is therefore a two track unemployment recovery that people in the, in the slightly more skilled level will actually be getting their jobs back much faster in the manufacturing sector, as the sector will be demanding more people. So, you know, people working in automotives, people working in uh, supply chains there, all of those logistics, employment there will be bouncing back very fast. Sure. What will not bounce back is the employment in the services sector where it is very low skill. So that, that's, that's, that's my first point. Of view. All right, Good points point. taken. Let me take the points forward with Abhinav Prakash. That's an interesting point that Shubhu I was making, Abhinav, you know, about how we saw during the first wave that uh, rural economy picked up, agriculture production picked up. But now with COVID-19 going into the rural sector, into rural India, which was largely unaffected during the first wave, is that going to have a massive impact on the rural economy? Yes, I agree to that point because 
even though we do not have a country wide national lockdown but most of india is under lockdown as of now and because of infection not spreading into the villages and the small towns and cities we see a major disruption which is happening at the grassroots level and i think it is going to get worse because the infection rates are definitely going to rise even though there is a decline in the last uh, one week or 10 days but uh, as the virus uh, spreads and mutates uh, in the countryside in the villages i think it's going to go uh, go worse because uh, vaccination is very slow i mean you you look at the small towns and cities there's lots of vaccine hesitancy and there's also the availability problem as of now what is happening today is that you have all the three shocks the supply side constraint because of the lockdown because of the supply chain disruption the demand shock because people are well not moving out they're not going to restaurants they're not going shopping and so on and also the income loss all the three shocks have now combined they are together and i think it paints a very bleak picture of the at least in the short term uh, we can't say anything about the long run or the medium term but at least in the short term a uh, short term i think is going to be a huge problem second aspect is frank the middle class is all but destroyed i have no other way to say it uh, this is a third shock in just four years which middle class has suffered one was the shock of demonetization where the entire housing sector just collapsed and the people lost their life savings uh, which they had invested in uh, buying a flat or something and most of the people in this country can only afford one flat in their lifetime so their entire lifetime saving is gone the second one was the lockdown in the first wave when you have massive job loss and the salary cut or the salary freeze and now in the second wave what has happened is uh, there's a catastrophic health expenditure and also uh, lots of people have died so and it, you have to remember that in india uh, most of the people don't have insurance we don't have public healthcare system at all so people have sp people spend uh, out of their pocket and it's not just the family whose member has fallen sick your relatives your friend everyone chip in and in this case what is happening people have spent money and the person is also gone so it's a massive massive uh, destruction of purchasing power in the middle class which was basically driving much of your consumption led economic growth rate so far so i i don't know what is going to happen because the consumption power is destroyed the production process will uh, take long time to recover and when the production process does not recover then unemployment rates are going to rise there are two more points frank one is uh, the problem of uh, unemployed young youth who are in college and some in school who have lost their parents in some cases parents grandparents they have passed away because of the covid and i can see that uh, uh, you know many people uh, from different colleges they're circulating their cvs that i am in the second year i am in the third year or i'm just completing my final year of law this is my cv i need a job because both of my parents are dead so this section and we don't know the magnitude we, we just have we have no idea about the magnitude of these well to do families you know uh, who have lost their uh, uh, main breadwinner in the family so that unemployment is going to present a unique problem other thing is that the poverty is going to rise uh, uh, there are different estimates that around uh, 12 crore people will be pushed below the poverty line and almost half of them will be in the indian subcontinent and we can be very sure that most of them will be in india so uh, this new class of poor which were you know either at the margin before or some of them were lower middle class they have been pushed below the poverty line because of this pandemic uh, their problem the the, the problem of uh, Uh, you know ensuring a job or at least some kind of secure income to them is going to be very very tough task going forward so we don't know as of now we have to wait for the situation to unfold we can only hope that vaccination proceeds faster so that some semblance of normalcy may return absolutely i think that's a very valid point a couple of aspects that i want to take forward with you mr shankar especially the youth and unemployment we've seen that you know there's a sense of angst and anxiety amongst the youth in the country and they are very upset uncertain about what may happen in the near future if jobs are not created for them do you believe that this is a situation that could lead to a lot of problems now, the the situation is actually very serious as avinav uh, has pointed out and i think it's time to take a very hard headed sober and frank assessment of reality and an honest discussion on what to do and also recognizing that uh, there are no easy fixes at this stage 
so i would uh, uh, suggest uh, the following for consideration uh, one is an idea which was floated last year and including by a member of the economic advisory council which is to introduce the equivalent of narega in urban areas so for the urban poor this is affordable because last year we were covering all of them when they went back to the villages so i think we could do that the second would be that within narega you create uh, an idea which is also been on the table for some time something like a banking system so there is a lockdown i have family in distress i draw the narega money and when things are normal i do the work and i don't get paid now this takes care of the bottom of the pyramid in the short run now those who are slightly better off and that's a real problem because um, i mean last year again when this was debated uh, it was felt after all what is it that we can do uh, so what was done was that a lot of uh, credit moratorium was given to the uh, msme sector and some government guaranteed loans were given so one would be to extend all of that there, there will be conservative views saying that that's not a good idea but i think we are reaching a point where some extension of those measures are warranted and also i think the government has now accepted that the fiscal deficit is something we need not uh, worry about at this stage and i hope that attitude continues now over and above those relief measures there is uh, one other thing which government could do and which is to extend consumption credit to the level of 50% of the last income that somebody who had a job and was pay, or other sources of income was paying income tax so in the assessment year 1920 i paid income tax on an income of say 6 lakhs the government guaranteed credit or soft credit or whatever consumption loan for 2 3 lakhs may be provided the other idea of course is to give some relief to those who have been orphaned that i think can be done more easily it should be done more easily but but uh, i think the real uh, big push forward would come from what is already on the table but which i do hope that the government and all the crisis management is uh, not losing sight of which is the creation of the development financial institution and commencement of work in the 100 lakh crore infrastructure pipeline because that is some work has been done so so let us use this time to work on it aggressively and see how quickly we can get the contracts out because that creates demand with an enormous multiplier effect and similarly the affordable housing for the urban in the urban areas for the workers is a very good idea but difficult to implement difficult to get it momentum and scale mm. but i think it's time we gave it very high priority and really set some target of you know this million homes over the next 3 years in these cities and stuff like that i mean th- those are i think uh, doable of course there are many other things which we can discuss but sure. but this to me occurred as a very practical way of uh, trying to move forward uh, they, these are not uh, silver bullets they won't solve the whole problem but certainly begin taking us in the right direction absolutely a start a pragmatic approach and somewhere for us to take it take this particular aspect forward talking about taking the aspect forward shubhamai we know that the rural sector which had done reasonably well over the last one year is going to be affected going forward it already is being affected that is something that we have spoken about one of the biggest problems one of the biggest issues that people have raised as far as the second wave of the pandemic was that we were not better prepared despite all the warning signs that were given by several experts both from within the government and outside the government now that we know that rural india is going to be adversely affected how do we prepare for it you know one of the things i must make clear at this point is <clears throat> rural distress is not the same as agricultural distress agricultural sector is not hurt if you look at the prospects for kharif sowing if you look at what has been for rabi the cultivation those are actually different from rural distress i quite agree with what abhinav is saying and what um, <clears throat> uh, mr rajesh is saying about rural distress 
and needs for health care. But agricultural, if you are looking at that as, a, as the same as agricultural sector distress, that's not the same thing. That sector is actually doing rather well and would continue to do well if the monsoon does well, despite the dislocation of agricultural labor. The problem that India will face, and I quite agree that there is a need for income support of, for possibly large, larger group of people, just remember one thing, the United States has pushed into the world economy an amount of money that has never ever been pushed in. This is creating a, and has already started creating the world's largest commodity super cycle. What does this mean? It means there's going to be generalized inflation across the world. For India, when people are grappling with sh supply shortages, most of commodities are tradable commodities. We shall be importing that inflation into India. When the governments of different states, and I'm sure they'll start giving out cash dole of some sort, it will immediately lead to generalized inflation across the country before the food comes on the table. This is a challenge. Frankly, it's a harsh challenge, and and uh, again, uh, and actually, there are there are not too many easy solutions. In fact, there are no easy solutions to it. But it's going to be the biggest challenge very soon. Cash will very soon outrun supply of commodities. It's already starting to show in our core inflation. Food inflation has just slightly eased off. But that was because of lots of I mean, lots of factors. But this is happening. There is no way that we shall be able to escape the inflationary push. Already, because of the rise in the diesel and petrol prices, cost of transporting commodities is feeding into the economy. What and how a government at any level will be able to do when it gives out money and the people go to the shops and find everything that they could buy, the prices have gone up, making them back almost at the same level as they were, is a very difficult choice. In fact, I would say that this is a choice that is going to be even more, this is probably going to be the biggest crisis very soon coming out of the pandemic. The rise in prices of practically every possible goods. And as I said, since it's originating from abroad, it's going to be having a very strong pressure on general price level in India. It seems very unusual to think it will not happen, but it is going to happen. Our only safety net right now is the food crop that we have, the wheat and rice. But that in any case is reaching people. I mean, there are subsidized prices. But the government, as you must have noticed this time, couldn't give out pulses in support. Last time they gave out pulses in support. And why is it? Because the government does not have the food stock right now is the chana stock or the grain stock or the pulses stock are all below the minimum uh, buffer levels, which is why this time pulses could not be given out in addition to the wheat and the rice. So there are already challenges here. Absolutely. So I'm not sure, even though I quite agree emotionally with the idea that cash needs to be given, I'm not sure whether that part was actually going to solve the problem. I have a little more hope on the NREGA, the urban NREGA programs, you know, the allowance for people to take up tax rebates and all those things, because even though those will give up cash, uh, raise up the cash in the economy, but those are the sort of things that can be done, essentially supply side support. Mm. Those would be needed much more now, and it has to be at different levels at different spaces, like giving space for MSMEs to actually expand. And, Last year's MSME support, I wrote about it, actually didn't help much because of lots of things. Uh, today, Business Standard in fact, has carried a report based on what I wrote earlier, that that entire scheme is being reworked, which uh, Mr. Jishan was pointing out is very necessary. So, you know, we need to do those sort of stuff. But again, as I said, coming back to it, uh, while it seems an eminently such, um, plausible idea on the cash thing, but, but again, as I said, the, the, the options there seem very limited. We are not printing dollar, we are printing rupees. And that's a vital difference. And we are going sure. to be importing a large part of those food elements very soon. 
And yeah, that's fine. definitely going to have a big impact really as far as our import bill is concerned. But, you know, Abhinav, let me talk about another aspect as well. You know, we'll, cont we'll you know, try and juxtapose the first wave of the pandemic with the second wave of the pandemic. And if you look at it, the economy, even though the first wave was not as severe as the second wave, the economy did far more worse in the first wave than it is doing now in the second wave. What, what is the reason, do you think? What can be attributed to that? Well, uh, simply last time we had a lockdown, a very severe lockdown, perhaps the most strict lockdown in the world. And that basically damaged the economy. This time we don't have this, that kind of generalized lockdown. I can see people moving out, business happening. Of course, there are local lockdowns and as usual, they are arbitrary. So if, if you're trying to order something from Amazon, if you're ordering fridge, that can be delivered. But if you're trying to order TV today, that will say it's not allowed. So those kind of usual bureaucratic uh, inconsistencies inconsistence are there, but uh, this time we don't have the generalized lockdown and that is saving the economy to some extent. Your ports are open, other parts of the world are doing uh, uh, a, a bit better than you. You know, America and UK have more or less recovered. They've vaccinated most of their population. So it's not like the last year where the entire world was, uh, world trade was down and your domestic economy was under a lockdown. So uh, that's the main reason why we are doing better despite the wave not being very severe. Uh, but uh, something which we should have done from the last year we have not done is that we should have built our response, the physical response around the around building the healthcare infrastructure. And that would have generated lots of jobs on the ground uh, last year itself because healthcare requires lots of people uh, to be employed. And of course that requires training, investment in uh, educational capacities, but you have lots of scope to expand your public healthcare. We should have done that and we should still do it. And the second part, Frank, we have talked on your state as well, uh, on, on your show as well, that Indian state is essentially a ghost state. We don't have the uh, public servants in this country. We don't have bureaucrats. We don't have public employees. Despite all the noise being made to cut down on the size of the government, the Indian government hardly exists on the ground. And we have seen in this in the case of this pandemic, the state simply simply melted away. Uh, America, with its free market economy, extreme capitalism, has five times more public employees than India. So you can go about filling those vacancies. There are more than 700,000 vacancies in the center, 1 million uh, seats in the school across the country. You have 30% vacancy in the agricultural departments alone. You have 40% vacancy in the high courts. Forget about the local level, the local courts and all. If the state governments and the center come together and they say we are going to fill these vacancies at a priority level in the next two years, I think lots of pain of the unemployment, at least among the educated youth, will be eased. And that will also have the ripple effect because once they will have a good job, a, a permanent income for the next 20, 30 years, the purchasing power will increase, the, their uh, discretionary spending will also increase, and that can provide some cushion. So I think we can do lots of things apart from this... Uh, uh, suggestions given by the other panelists, uh, but I think that's something that the governments can do immediately. Absolutely, fill up the vacancies. There are so many. We're talking about job creation. Millions of vacancies, by the way, not just so many. There are literally millions of vacancies as of now across the center and the states. Simple solution, <laughs> Mr. Shankar. Fill up all the vacancies, and the youngsters and everybody else will have will have jobs. But uh, I don't think that's really a priority area as far as governments are concerned because they are looking at the bill that they'll get at the end of the day, and that's something that they want to avoid. So let's get closing comments now from all panelists with the best way forward, starting first with you, Mr. Shankar. Uh, one uh, response to Sukhumar's uh, observations, the government has a policy instrument available, which is lowering the taxes on petrol and diesel. They should ideally be in GST, and they should be in the middle level of GST, because that is a very powerful instrument of lowering the cost of doing business. Now, we have a system, historically evolved, where the cost of doing business is very high. And then we want to give palliatives to lower the cost. So we'll have a PLI scheme, we will give some, you know, sales tax or VAT exemption here or lower, you know, electricity bill somewhere else. So I think we need to focus on lowering the cost of doing business in this country lowering, uh, say, bringing petrol and diesel into GST, that will take care of inflationary pressures, which may be important. And in coping with inflation, we can also look at other interventions which have been done well in the past. So, so in the past, government has imported sugar and released it in the market to take care of inflation. 
it is imported pulses imported in the market so you take care of the essential consumption basket and you let inflation plates itself out in other areas and the other thing which uh, will require maybe a whole separate discussion that in sectors of the economy and the msme are there policy instruments which are viable and feasible which could lead to short term job creation and in a manner which we can afford so like the the urban housing program is one i had mentioned in my earlier comments but with the more serious analysis one could i'm sure identify segments where there is potential for job creation in a manner which is sustainable and will generate greater optimism among, amongst the young men in the country because right now i mean everybody is facing uh, a very bleak scenario both as far as friends and relatives are concerned this the health front as well as on the income front absolutely shubhamoy well yeah i mean uh, i can see more or less that we are agreed that whatever we do is going to raise prices and that to me is the biggest worry because coming out of a pandemic you don't want another crisis to face us immediately and that crisis will lead to more disturbance on the streets if people find their everyday items prices rising up across the state so yes i expect the states and this is something very important i like what i've never stopping about filling up employment but uh, and many other things which the state governments can do there are possibilities each state will have to work out its different possibilities in terms of income support and production support but it's necessary just as they have said that they could do lockdown better uh, than a nationally enforced lockdown i suspect states will need to really understand this thing instead of going in for a national level sort of strategy and approach the center can be sort of the refinancing arm for each of the state but the center shouldn't be the one who should be crafting out strategies for each state i think that will be counterproductive the what works for tamil nadu will not work for west bengal and what will work for maharashtra will not work for punjab so these are very important at this time for states to start really considering what are the ways that they would need if they can do it and if for that if they want more fiscal support from the center obviously that will have to be given absolutely and uh, abhi now close the show for us with your concluding remarks yeah i, I agree that the we should have more decentralized approach in dealing with the problem of the employment uh, and uh, uh, you know some states like uh, maharashtra and gujarat will be better off focusing on small and medium scale industries to make sure that they get back on their uh, get back on the track which can create employment because those are basically more industrial oriented states in the states like bihar and bengal perhaps they can focus on uh, filling up more vacancies and government jobs which can provide short term relief to the people uh, and of course we should focus on nationally as uh, ajay shankar ji has talked about uh, some kind of national employment guarantee scheme in the cities as well because the urban employment is really very high as of today so i think we should focus on the short term immediately and we should plan for the medium term because in the long run anyways we are all dead so just forget the long run as of now focus on the short and the medium term absolutely very well put all right gentlemen we'll have to leave to that thank you so much for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us what's coming out of this discussion is that before the second wave of the pandemic we were all well on course to recovery but now we don't know where our economy is headed the unemployment and inequality rate are only growing wider the economy has not been as hit during the second wave as it was during the first wave but job losses are a big concern the services sector recovery will be slow meaning getting low skill jobs will take a while manufacturing is expected to return with a bank which will help skilled labor this is the third shock in 4 years and it has left the middle class completely devastated there are no easy fixes but if we put our mind to it nothing is impossible we have to have a narega like scheme for the urban poor and filling up of the millions of vacancies in the government sector needs to be done immediately we should also focus on lowering the cost of doing business states should do more as far as job losses are concerned and also craft their own policies rather than waiting for a blanket policy from the center 
these few steps will ease the burden of the common man and also take away the angst and anxiety of the youth who are desperately looking for jobs. Once again, thank you for your continued support. For those of you who haven't already subscribed, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon and then all notifications. Do follow our social media handles for all the latest updates and you can also subscribe to our newsletter to get some incisive content. The Bharata First team runs a daily big picture quiz. Please do participate by going through the description in big picture videos. Here are the UPI IDs for those of you who would like to come forward and contribute. A small contribution that you make will be a giant leap for us to keep bringing you this content. So do continue to show your love and support. All the information along with a few recommendations are in the description of the video. So please go through it. That's it from me. See you again next time. Thank you.